By the way, this coming Wednesday night, we have a baptism scheduled. A woman from Florida is coming up. We're picking her up on Tuesday. And she's flying in. We'll be picking her up, and she's going back on Thursday. But Wednesday night, we'll be baptizing this young lady in Jesus' name. The day after Thanksgiving, a family from Tennessee is coming up to get baptized. We're having a special Friday night sing. We're going to all be, gather and just sing and baptize those three in Jesus' name. Isn't that exciting? John the Baptist would have shouted for that. Amen. And you know, John's baptism, of course, was temporary, wasn't it? Because in Acts chapter 19, the Apostle Paul ran into some disciples of John the Baptist, who had been baptized by John. But they had to be baptized over again a second time because now Jesus had come. Jesus had died and been buried and rose again. So now they had to be baptized over again because they needed the name. That's how important the name is. Remember reading about that in Acts chapter 19? And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Then Paul said, Unto what then were ye, ba unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto them that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Amen. That's the gospel. Why should it be any different today? How can people say that all ended? Did the gospel end? Did the effectual power of the death of Jesus end? How about his burial? How about his resurrection? If his death, burial, and resurrection has power today, then so does repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, because they are the death, burial, and resurrection. And that's how we enter into Jesus Christ. Hmm. That's not about right. That is right. Now, verse 11 says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He goes on and says, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. He's going to blow away all the chaff. He's going to take all the stuff out of your life that doesn't belong there. Isn't that good? And gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Hmm. This is quite a powerful, fiery message here that John preached. And when he finished, he looked up, looked at the people, and Jesus stepped out and came forth, the Son of God. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? Well, here's John the Baptist, and he thought, Who am I to baptize the Son of God? The Son of God! Me? Can you see how this is? How would you like to have been there and have the task of baptizing the Son of God? He felt so unworthy. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. In other words, let it happen. Just do it. For thus, hear this now, 
For those people that for some reason put baptism on the back burner, minimize it, it's no big deal, you just go down and get wet, it's just a little ritual you do, oh no, no. Listen, Jesus said, for thus it becometh us, not me, us, you and me and all of us, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. How are you going to fulfill righteousness by rejecting baptism? Thus it becometh us, all of us, to fulfill all righteousness, to fulfill righteousness rather, all of it. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. What a beautiful sight that had to have been. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You know, in my old catechismal training when I was in the Lutheran system, practicing witchcraft and Lutheranism at the same time and found them to be quite compatible, didn't bother the pastor any. Isn't that terrible? It's awful. <laughs> but anyway, I was taught that this verse proves that there are three gods. Because here was Jesus standing in the water. The dove came down and a voice. Now, is the Holy Ghost a bird? The dove was a sign of the Spirit of God descending. It was a sign unto John. Here was Jesus in the water. And who is Jesus Christ? He is God, manifested in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. Paul wrote in Colossians 2, verses 8 and 9, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. Who is Jesus Christ? He is God, very God, wearing a human body. The Son of God. And that's why the voice that spoke from heaven, for God fills the universe. The voice, and God always chooses his words. None are wasted. They said, this is my beloved Son. In whom I am well pleased. Not with whom. In whom. Therefore, as it says in Colossians 1, 9, 1, 19, it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. That's why Isaiah 9, 6 tells us, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Ever lasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Son, the little baby boy, is called the Everlasting Father? Why? Because he is God manifested in the flesh. God, very God. And that reconciles all the scriptures. You don't have to ignore any. People say you'll never understand the Godhead. Nobody can understand the Godhead. Did you ever hear that one? The Bible says we can, and we better. Romans 1.20 For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, 